So now if we could move on into this large uh, columned uh, gallery here that focuses principally on the state dining room and the idea of food service in the White House. It's a little bit difficult to pick out the favorites here, but one of the things I'd like to, to point out are, is, is this gilded bronze plateau. This is only two sections. Uh, it's actually seven sections long. It extends to 14 and a half feet when the full thing is assembled. Uh, it was bought by President Monroe uh, in 1817 for the state dining room table. Um, it has little plinths that can support uh, women's figures that can hold candles or glass dishes full of sweetmeats or candies. It has little uh, ornamental urns that can also fit into those slots. It came with a series of baskets and vases such as the one you see on the plateau that were designed to hold flowers or uh, uh, fruits. Uh, and then the mirrored platform in the bottom was, was designed just as mirrors were throughout the house to help uh, double your candlelight, double the reflectivity of beautiful things such as flowers and, and uh, uh, decorative foods. Um, it was described by a congressman in 1818 who attended a dinner at the White House as being the most impressive thing he had ever seen. And then he thought how interesting it was that he could see his dinner companions across the table reflected upside down in the mirror. So he was seeing their faces, but in inverted form. It was extremely sophisticated and extremely large. There were plateaus in America. They were rare, but one of this scale. I mean, it was clearly, again, made for the scope of the biggest house in America and the residence of the chief executive. So. But later in the 19th century, you, uh, Mrs. Julia Grant acquired the, the piece over here to also be a dining room centerpiece. Uh, this is called the Hiawatha Boat. It was made by Gorham, the great silver company of Providence, Rhode Island in 1871. And it uh, was ex exhibited in Philadelphia at the 1876 exposition to honor the 100th anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. And Mrs. Grant thought it was so American in its nature. It represents the Henry Wadsworth Longfellow poem, The Song of Hiawatha. And so Hiawatha is in this birch bark canoe, perhaps not exactly as a Native American canoe would have looked, uh, but steering it at the rear with his little friend the squirrel on top of the mast uh, and parts of the, of the uh, poem ins inscribed on the sides of the, of the thing. So it would have been filled with flowers. Occasionally it was actually on the plateau and they would have the gilded and the silver mixed together in trying to make an exuberant uh, Victorian dinner in the uh, you know, third quarter of the 19th century. There was a, a sense that the nation had rebounded from the war uh, you know, Mrs. Lincoln received a lot of criticism for spending money on the house during the war, uh, but by the 1876, I mean, that's what the Centennial Exposition was. It was an enormous celebration of America is a, an industrial power and we create such wonderful things that we should be showing them to the world. The you know, World's Fairs didn't have to happen in London and Paris. They could happen in, in Philadelphia and show off the, the work of the United States.